We are live. Welcome to Review and Thoughts, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Okay, so I try to start my videos these days with a short kind of, you know, I, I don't, people shouldn't have to wait forever for during one of these videos to find out if I like or dislike the movie. I loved this movie. This was, I, I guess I can kind of see where some of the criticisms are coming from. But no, by and large, I really, really love this movie. This is going to be a very positive review. There will be some jokes. And I meant to say, it's a review of the 3D aspect as well. I realize this video is long. I'm going to do what I can to make it through time. Also, if you're only interested in the view, that part of the video is not the whole length of the video. This is length. Check the time codes in the description box. Okay, so, yeah. Trigger warning and or content warning, this movie features torture, kidnapping, ableism, gaslighting, murder, body horror, and I think... I think those are all of them. Right, and bullying and other abuse. Yeah, so the movie is rated PG-13. Not sure how it got away with the PG-13, but it is, and so is this video. Now, let's see. I am going to. Right, I'm. For at least parts of this video, I'm going to be speaking faster than might, you know, seem comfortable because my back is still in pain. So, it's a visually spectacular dark superhero, partially horror movie featuring zombies, supernatural powers, gruesome violence, although here's PC 13, where the leads do messed up things in order to win, at times are not that much better than the bad guys. Are we 100% certain that this wasn't always developed as a way to get Sam Raimi back to directing movies? Because it's tailor-made for him. And... Yeah, so this video will contain spoilers for the MCU leading up to this point. Possibly including Moon Knight. Maybe not that one since it's so recent. You know, episode 6 aired like a couple of days ago and this aired like... Also a couple of days, yeah, I don't think there was very much time between the two. But I will not be spoiling the movie itself in the review section. And certainly if I think of something that I do want to spoil, I will hold up an index finger. And you can just mute and skip ahead until you see me lower my index finger. That'll mean there are no more spoilers. Now... Uh, Brings us right. So, yeah, I to, to give you an idea of whether or not my opinion on Sam Raimi is going to make any sense of you at all. I have created a ranking. These are worst to best of all of the Sam Raimi movies that I have watched. Keeping in mind, I love all of them except Spider-Man Three. All the others are all amazing. I'm not ranking. I'm ranking how much I love them, not whether or not I love all of them. Spider-Man 3. Spider-Man 3, Drag Me to Hell, Oz, The Quick and the Dead, The Gift, Spider-Man 1, 2, Evil Dead, Evil Dead 2, Evil Dead 3, A Simple Plan, and Dark Man 1. And by the end of the review, I will add this movie to that ranking. And, yeah, MCU also love all the movies, love all the shows. I am just going to give a really brief... Worst to best ranking. Gonna speed run it because there's a lot of movies by now. Again, like the same Raimi movies, I I love all of these movies, so it's not the lowest on the list. Still one I love. Okay, so the ranking is Iron Man two, Dark Thor two, Black Widow, Captain America one, Thor one, Ragnarok, Hulk, Ant Man, Ant Man two. Homecoming, Doctor Strange 1, Iron Man 3, Iron Man 1, Avengers 1, Avengers 2, Spider-Man 2, Spider-Man 3, Guardians 1, Guardians 2, Black Panther, Captain America 2, 
Shang-Chi, Eternals, Captain America 3, Avengers 3, and Avengers 4. And once again, by the end of the review, I will add this movie to that. And just a, a real quick, this is, once again, worst to best ranking of the MCU shows, the Disney Plus shows. Loki, What If, Hawkeye, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Moon Knight, and WandaVision. And, let's see, um, I suppose that might be more or less, right, this video is not going to contain any clips of any kind, the most visual it gets is when I sometimes act something out, so feel free to watch something visual, like clips from the movie, in another tab, I won't mind, uh, mind, I, I won't even know, of course. I'm not spying on you right now. I don't have a film fan, game geek, YouTuber from another part of the multiverse spying on you right now. Now that... Yeah, honestly, I've heard some people say you really won't be able to follow this movie if you haven't taken in all of the MCU stuff. I think it adds more if you watch, like... I'll, I'll give you a full list in in a very very shortly, but I just want to start with if you haven't watched very much MCU, like the only stuff you need to know, like I would definitely say either watch Avengers three and four, or at least have someone like explain the key plot points. Actually, yeah, I th you could you could go into this. Just make sure somebody explains, somebody who knows what's important, explains the parts of those two movies that are important to know for this one. And you'll be fine. But yeah, if you do want to understand absolutely everything, you know, basically, you have to watch everything featuring Wanda and or Strange, as well as What If. Now, yeah, and I, I am personally glad that there is, like, the movie does build on these other movies. You know, you, you get more out of this movie if you watch those. And, yeah, since we're still dealing with Corona, I want to say during this video, I will touch my face, I've already done it a couple of times. I want to assure you, I washed my hands since last time I was outside, and I will wash my hands again before going out. So yeah, this is my very first viewing of this, but definitely won't be my last. And not very much time passed between me, you know, coming home from the theater and hitting record. And... Yeah, so the... I suppose... Let's see. Yeah, so the plot. I think I will keep it vague and just say that Doctor Strange travels into the multiverse. Right, actually, yeah, I copied it from Wikipedia. Doctor Stephen Strange, with the help of both old and new mystical allies, travels into the multiverse. To face a mysterious new adversary. And I just want to note that Sam Raimi made two references to Doctor Strange in Spider Man 2. And yeah, so, you know, for those who might not know, I watch and video review pretty much every single comic book adaptation movie that goes to theaters and the stuff that's in continuity with it. But this is one of those cases where I was really looking forward to it. I might have chosen to watch this even if it wasn't something I was already going to watch. Honestly, just for Sam Raimi as the director. Now. So yeah, the, the 3D is very good it's not like the best i've ever seen but it is this kind of like it adds depth you know there will be a scene where like 
something I noticed early on. There was like there was a completely regular scene of just two people sitting across a table eating. You know, not a big deal. What whatever. But they added depth so that the person sitting closest to the camera, it felt like they were closer to the viewer than the other. You know, so yeah, there's depth. There, you know, every so often something will like stick out at at the viewer, and sometimes stuff will be like thrown at the viewer, which yeah, you know, it's not like it's not Avatar one three D. It's 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 good and it's fun, you know. But yeah, I if you like watching movies in three D, watch it in three D for sure. If three D isn't really your thing, this is not gonna be the movie to change your mind. Unless it's the first time you've had the one where they throw stuff at you. And... Yeah, so this was written by Jade Hallie Bartlett, who also... Oh, that's right, yeah. And this is, according to IMDb, her first credit. Their, their first credit. And Michael Waldron, who helped write Loki, he was the creator, and he wrote two specific episodes. And, yeah, you know, the, the writing is quite good, with some exceptions, the... There are definitely some conveniences, but if you look at, like, the way people act, like, psychology and interpersonal relationships, most of the time, I would argue, it is quite good. And the, you know, they came up with creative solutions, the, you know, the people who have superpowers use those superpowers in fun, creative, satisfying ways. And, yeah, moving on to the direction. Sam Raimi has directed... Well, yeah, he's directed 17 movies, and he... Yeah, he's in pre-production for another, and yet another was announced. And, yeah, I've already mentioned the ones that I've watched and how I would rank them. Right, and he he developed Xena Warrior Princess, which is quite good for, for what it is. I think he also developed Hercules, but I could not tell you if I watched, like, two episodes or 20 or 100 or so, so I'm not going to... I can't really claim to have an informed opinion. I know for a fact I watched every single episode of Xena and own them on DVD, in fact. But yeah, the, the, yeah. You know, of, uh, oh, right. Wow. That was, holy crap. It was February of 2020. But yeah, Scott Derrickson left the project as director, and Sam Raimi took over. And right from the start, I was like, "This is amazing!" Like the when I heard that Scott Derrickson was leaving, I was like, "I couldn't believe it!" I was like, "But he did such a good job on the first one. Sinister is one of the best." Like. He could definitely also have done a great job on, on this one. But for Sam Raimi to, to finally get back in the director's chair is just amazing. So good to see. And, yeah, you know, yeah, love that Sam Raimi directed this. You know, the guy makes amazing superhero movies most of the time. And amazing horror movies the vast majority of the time. You know, before... Before this movie, he had only made one superhero horror movie, that being Darkman. That is by far my favorite superhero horror movie ever made. Although, I'm not sure I've seen that much great competition. If, if you're, like, if you know some great superhero horror movie, please put it in the comments. But, yeah, you know, I've been craving a spiritual successor to Darkman since I first watched it, and... 
I think that must have been like 99. Yes, yeah, so something like that. Honestly, until I heard that Sam Raimi was directing this, I was a little worried that we, it would be an extremely long time before he got a chance to make another movie with how poorly received his Wizard of Oz spinoff was. Although I guess eight or nine years in Hollywood time is an extremely long time. I mean, M. Night Shyamalan has had a string of failures, but he keeps getting work. I don't always say it when talking about his movies, but Sam Raimi is one of my favorite directors and has been since I was a teenager watching, you know, Darkman 1 and the Evil Dead trilogy. And, yeah, the visuals are especially strong in Sam Raimi's comic book movies, one of his greatest strengths as a filmmaker. So, let's see. Yeah, I was hoping that he would bring that to this despite the substantial limitations placed on excellent filmmakers by the MCU house style. And yeah, I, I've i read some people saying that it's not quite a Sam Raimi movie. It is an MCU movie with a Sam Raimi style to it. There's definitely some truth to that. It, this, this doesn't really break out of the box of the MCU house style. But I do think it is impressive how much freedom they did give him. And yeah, the, the original Spider-Man and the first Darkman... Uh, both movies are great at visualizing what the titular hero is thinking. Spider-Man's nightmare after being bitten, and Darkman has several sequences where we see his thoughts visually represented. And, yeah, the, there is something like that in this. And, yeah. Let's see. And... The... Yeah, the the I I would definitely say this is indeed the first horror movie in the MCU. Hopefully also not the last. And I I mean I would make an argument that Sam Raimi is barely capable of making an entire movie without at least one horror scene. You know, technically the the Spider-Man trilogy are not horror movies, but you know, the first, when Norman Osborn takes the gas, becomes crazy, and when the mask talks to him, I forgot to write that down when I know, yeah. In the second one, you have the entire scene where an unconscious Dr. Octopus, via the metal arms, kills an entire room of doctors and nurses. In the third, you have Spider-Man tearing off the Venom symbiote, and the Venom symbiote, you know, I just realized that I did not warn for Spider-Man spoilers. I mean... I guess, yeah, I hope nobody watched this and didn't already know those. Honestly, I'm not telling anybody what movies you have to watch, but you should definitely watch, at the very least, the first two Spider-Man movies before watching this, I would definitely say. Now, let's see the, it, yeah. Right, and yeah, the, you know, every Spider-Man movie has at least one horror movie scene in it. It's possible that wouldn't have, like, you know, Sam Raimi started that trend and then they just kept going. Now, Dr. Christine does get a little bit to do in this, you know, in the... She, yeah, she's not very, she's not utilized all that well in either of these movies. And, oh, that's right, I, I guessed that there would be something stereotypically feminine, that she, there would be a thing with a wedding for her. Yeah, that's, I really shouldn't have been able to to guess that. I would really hope that he had moved further anyway. Let's see. Uh, yes, uh, Sam Raimi brought some of his Evil Dead sensibilities and style to his three Spider-Man movies and also here and it, it makes perfect sense for a Doctor Strange movie. And let's see. 
um, Yeah, Sam Raimi said in an interview that he wants to deliver what the fans want, but not what they expect. And you can tell he's clearly passionate about the movie. It's pretty amazing to think he's been in the business for 40, it's 41 years. Or actually, yeah, a little bit longer than that, even. Yeah. And... Yeah, so I mentioned in my video talking about the first movie that the strength of director Scott Derrickson that that movie benefited, benefited from is that he excels at portraying the sort of the, the, the where the natural and supernatural worlds meet and something evil and dangerous getting through to our, to our world. And the thing that Sam Raimi excels at that I let's see, yeah, that, that this movie benefits from is his ability to portray something evil that's almost beyond human comprehension, that seems impossible for our heroes to defeat. He has a knack for visualizing unusual dangers, a talent for drawing the audience into worlds and concepts They were that if they were told before watching the movie, they would probably figure it's too fantastical to feel anything about other than confusion. And yeah, so this opens in media res, which is really cool. The the very start of the movie shows us something strange. And yeah, the movie legitimately cuz the movie knows that we're ready for like the first movie was clearly afraid of freaking out the normies. Like they were they were legitimately concerned that people would walk like, you know, they might wait entirely through the end credits before starting to walk out, or the release until the credits start rolling. But they would leave thinking and or saying, I guess the MCU is just too weird for me now. Oh well, you know, and because that movie was so well received, you know, Marvel was like, okay, I guess you do want weird. Here you go, you know, and, and that's, again, Sam Raimi is the perfect man for... There's some incredibly weird stuff in, in this movie, and I, I think I saw someone saying that it's especially the very start and the very end of the movie that are especially weird, and especially Sam Raimi, I think that is probably, yeah. And the, let's see, there was that other thing. Ah, what was the, right, right, yeah. Basically, every weird thing that shows up in the first one will be referenced or reappear or something like that in, in this. Now, I'm not going to give away whether the ending is happy or sad, but I will say it fits with what came before. I am very happy with how the movie ends, and it doesn't really require any Deus Ex Machina or other convenient writing and yeah the climax of the first Doctor Strange solo movie is very creative and inventive and I'm not sure that in this one I don't I don't think it's really the the, the climax is not the most inventive and creative but there are some scenes as inventive and creative as the, the climax of the first Doctor Strange solo movie. There are both a mid credit scene and a post credit scene, so you will, like, I've, I suppose I will say not everybody's going to, some, some people will be frustrated if they stay through to the very, very end. You know, if you... Yeah, a lot of people will be happy to leave as soon as you've seen the mid credit scene. I think... Tell you what, I will... If you if you want to know, skip ahead until the first spoiler section. It will be the first thing I say. Unless I forget. Now, that brings us to the characters. So, 
yeah, Benedict Cumberbatch returns as Doctor Stephen Strange, and yeah, he he continues to do an incredible job playing the role, and the I think I will hmm. Yeah, I'm not going to talk too much about his his character in this because it would get into spoilers, but just yeah, they didn't do his character dirty, I don't think. And Elizabeth Olsen as Wanda Maximoff and yeah, she's it's it's difficult to put into words how good of an actress she is. She is one of the best actors regardless of gender that just it's 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 unreal how good she is you know if you if you if you want to see her do really good acting and you're not really into comic book movies martha marcy may marlene she's incredible in that and that's in general an incredible movie yeah i can't say very much about her without spoiling, so I'll just say her acting's incredible. Chiwetel Ejiofor plays Carl Mordo, and yeah, he's he's not given that much to do. He's still a great actor, and yeah. Benedict Wong playing Wong, also kind of underserved. And... Sauchil Gomez playing America Chavez. I read a lot of people who legitimately couldn't stand her character. I don't really get why it. Uh, yeah, I th I thought she would like. At times she's charming. At times she's kind of snarcastic and. I mean, I guess it's because people wanted the movie to focus more on Steven and Wanda, and or Wanda, but the the I th I think they did the best they could for for you know they want to to open up the the MCU and yeah. And let's see the uh, yeah. I don't have much to say about Rachel McAdams as Christine Palmer, other than she gives a really great performance and is underserved. And let's see. That brings us. Yeah, so this has some diversity in casting. I would argue it does also appear to at least try to understand the unique perspectives of its minority characters. And let's see. You know, it's not a Sam Raimi movie until there's a woman screaming in fear and or horror. And there's definitely some of that in this movie. I, I'm not sure. I, I'm not going to give away whether it's a lot or a little. And. Yeah, the acting in this movie, like, at times it's campy, like Evil Dead and Spider Man. At other times it's subdued and complex, like A Simple Plan and The Gift. And. Yeah, it's. They, di they did a really great job. Now, the dialogue is also good, although there are times where it is kind of annoying. Yeah, the cinematography is incredible. For sure, there are times where it's trapped by the house style, but when they allow, you know, when the producers 
turn away for a second, they they put some incredible stuff in in the movie. And the DP is John Matheson, who also DP'd. Let's see. Oh, 40 different movies, including Logan, the 2010 Robin Hood, Kingdom of Heaven, and Gladiator. So yeah, incredibly talented. And the editing, oh, that's right, I could not, when I looked it up, it didn't say editor, it just said editorial department. Yeah, so I'll, I'll just talk about the, the editing. Again, at times there are definitely issues, but the, the, what's the word? I don't think there was ever a time where I was confused with the, like, geography and logistics and such. Like, I always understood where everyone and everything was in, were in relation to each other and such. Which is incredibly important when you have such big action scenes as this one. And, yeah, I, for, for sure, the, there's an issue of, of the, the movie is rushed. It, uh, essentially, the list of what the it, like. I think when they made the first movie, they had an idea of something that you could that 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 movie could very naturally build to. But then the the Marvel unit, yeah, the, the MCU has gotten so much bigger in that amount of time, so more stuff was added you know there are other things that they really wanted to, to do and yeah you know it ended it started out with just like one or two things that it really wanted to do and it ended up with a relatively short list but a list of things that it felt that they felt it had to be and there are definitely some of these things that you can tell like not everything it's kind of like with Eternals. Not everything goes together completely smoothly. You know. Like, let's see. What would be a good example of everything? I would argue that most aspects of the Guardians Volume 2, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, you know, that there is a very clear, cohesive whole. You know, it is about trauma, found family, and these, yeah. Yeah, you could, you could, uh, like, you could take a scene from that movie and watch it independently of the rest of the movie, and you'd still pick up some of the themes that are going on throughout this movie, the entire movie. This movie, like, there are scenes where you could take them and you could just watch them independently, and you wouldn't have any clue what the rest of the movie is like. Yeah. And that, it, it didn't bother me that much. For some people, it's going to be a huge... Yeah. The special effects, as always with the MCU, there are some that are incredible. There are some that are most of the way there. And a little bit that's just kind of, eh, okay, yeah. But yeah, there are some, like, the incredible ones are legitimately, like, just unreal. Like, the level of detail, the amount of different individual, like, characters and all, the, just incredible. There's some incredible stunt work as well. And, ah, that's right, I forgot to put in the budget I will just really quickly find in huh right so the budget holy crap yeah, the budget was two hundred million, and the current box office is one hundred twenty-one point seven. Keeping in mind the movie released, let's see. Oh wow, some people could watch it all on the on the second second of May. 
But yeah, otherwise released on the 6th, which for me, as I record this, is yesterday. I watched it earlier today because otherwise I could not get a 3D showing. That's a lot of money to make in such a short amount of time. So, so yeah. Now, they do quite a good job on the on the sets and the location shooting. Like, there's a number of varied locations in this and and settings, and you know, the, there's variety. But n there's nothing that like shatters the tone. Great costume work as well. The the action is absolutely incredible. And yeah, you know, you have chases, physical fights, you have superpowers, and yeah, the the like, if you just want to see some cool magic use, this movie really is going to 100%. It's, it's incredible. The, the magical fighting, yeah. Now, the score was handled by Danny Elfman. And let's see what it says. Right. He has 101 movie credits as composer and yeah he he did an incredible job here you know he's he's worked with Raimi before he's done other MCU he's done other superhero films he's versatile he brings in some notes from like <laughs> from other stuff to reference things and it's it's really good and just yeah there's some like there's this scene where you see someone doing something really evil and the the music i mean it's almost like a sort of like it could almost work as like a theme tune like if if that character was a video game boss 100% this would be the music that played you know, leading right up to the boss fight and during the boss fight. And that, I mean that as a compliment. And yet, in general, there are several pieces of music that really underline the evil we're witnessing, and yeah, fantastic. Was this the first? Let's see. I. Yeah, I'm not sure he's as as far as I can tell, he hasn't done other other. He hasn't done the uh, actual Evil Dead movies. I'm I'm not surprised he didn't do the first one because nobody knew who Sam Raimi was for the first one. But for like two and three, he was a bit bigger of no. It doesn't look like he did for those. So yeah, maybe he for for this one he wanted to make up for that. And it doesn't look like he did the Drag Me to Hell either. But then that was... Actually, yeah, he took a break from working with Sam Raimi after Spider-Man 2. And then came back. For us, the great and powerful, it looks like. Yeah, so that... Yeah, anyway. Yeah, honestly, I... I I almost never buy a movie score, but this is one where I might actually consider. Like, it, it's incredible. It's really, really, yeah. You know, there are some movies where you can watch them, where, where if you watch them more than once, you you can, you know, just close your eyes and focus on the music, focus on the, the audio design, and get enjoyment out of that, you know. And this is this is one of those movies. Off the top of my head, I my DVD of Get Carter also has a music-only audio track. So that brings right. So this movie, without end credits, it is 
at least for, from my, my version at least uh, two hours straight and I forgot to note how long the end credits were I'm guessing around 10 minutes probably it's it's around there these days I would definitely say like if you're not into the movie by the 30 minute mark I don't think there's you're not really gonna feel differently you're just not gonna like the, the movie the rest of the movie I would argue. So yeah, the best thing about this movie is definitely Sam Raimi back to doing what he does best. If I had to pick, I, t I try to be, try to see if I can find at least just one, at least one legitimately negative thing about this movie, about each, each movie I do a video on. I would definitely say yeah, I've seen other people use the word overstuffed. It didn't bother me a lot, but I can't really claim, like, I wanted more. I wanted the movie to be even longer, but then I guess so did the people making it. That's why it's rushed. But, you know, I, I don't mean that the movie, it's not that the movie is incomplete. It's that the movie is in such a hurry to get from point A to point B to C, and... Yeah, the, the, ah, uh, what was the thing that, if you wanted to be, like, hypothetically, you could trim some stuff out of this movie, and it wouldn't, like, it would be less enjoyable for us hardcore fans, but the movie wouldn't really be made any like actually thinking more about it I guess it does no never mind yeah it does add to to the themes and such but the movie is definitely in in a rush and I've seen some people say that uh, Amarca Chavez gets too little character development. I don't really agree. I I agree that it's in a in a rush, but it definitely, I it it's there for me. It did hit. And that brings us to yeah yeah. I was most worried that the movie would be too busy, and ultimately I don't think so. And the aspect I was most looking forward to was the whole multiversal aspect. I realize not everybody agrees with me on this. I think they did a very good job. I, th I think they took a very smart, uh, what's the word, approach. The so Some of the trailers definitely do give too much away. And I think they could have edited it a, just slightly differently and it would have worked for for getting us interested in the movie but on um, you know at the same time the the trailers do give you a good idea of what the movie is like and the cover and poster do not give too much away and they do give you a good idea of what the movie is like that brings us to so yeah the on Rotten Tomatoes, this movie currently has a 75% based on 302 reviews. Only 74 of them being rotten, but that is still a lot. An 88% audience score based on over 5,000 verified ratings and an average rating of 4.4. Right, and the average rating of critics was 6 point fifty out of ten and the consensus is Doctor Strange the Multiverse of Madness labors under the weight of the sprawling MCU but Sam Raimi's distinctive direction cast an entertaining spell which brings us to Metascore where it has 62 based on 59 critics 62 out of 100 and 6.1 out of 10 Let's see, based on at least 119 user reviews. And on IMDb, it has 
7.6 based on over 57 almost 58,000 IMDb user votes 24.5 of them are 8 for 8 out of 10 21.6 10 out of 10 19.6 7 out of 10 13.5 9 out of 10 9.26 out of 10 but also 3.9 for one out of ten so yeah but widely beloved and yeah the the if you don't like horror movies this movie is going to be way past what you're comfortable with for those of us who love horror movies and gore you know it's it's mild can consider like this is not the thing or the fly Videodrome, you know, but it's a lot for a PG-13 rating. You know, if you if you're gonna bring a teenager, just get a, an idea of what is in the movie first. I th actually, I guess I could imagine the parents guide on IMDb. Let's see. Yeah, there are. Yeah, the, the IMDb Parents Guide gives a, a good, yeah, goes goes into the violence and gore. But yeah, it, for, for Sam Raimi, it's incredibly tame, you know, but th this is as much as he could get away with on MCU, yeah. And let's see that brings us to yeah so my my final rating so as I've said it's not a perfect movie but my rating is not based on is everything perfect it's based on do the good things outweigh the bad and due to things like thematic I suppose not depth, but like there's there's something there. There's something to to sink your teeth into. The acting by the main cast, the the creativity of the the horror, the gore, the magic power use, and just all the all the stuff that's Yeah, there's just, there's, there's so much that's so good. So yes, I give this 10 multiverse spanning conflicts out of 10. So, the, the, yeah, so the ranking, worst to best of all the Sam Raimi movies that I have watched. <sighs> yeah, this is... Yes. My updated ranking. Worst to best, all the Sam Raimi movies that I've watched. Spider-Man 3, Dragman Hell, Oz, Quick and the Dead, Gift, Spider-Man 1, 2, Evil Dead 1, Evil Dead 2, Doctor Strange 2, Evil Dead 3, A Simple Plan, and Darkman 1. And for the MCU... Yeah, ultimately, it is just above Avengers 2 and just below Spider-Man 2, M MCU Spider-Man 2. Yeah. And that is it for the non-spoiler stuff. So, let's get into the spoiler if the thing will work. There we go. I knew you had it in you. And I am just really quickly going to note that we start. There we go.
So, diving into notes taken while watching. So, the rest of this video is not a review. It's a series of, well, thoughts. Some is analysis, some is MSC 3 k riff tracks, and other jokes. And... Yeah, so the yeah the section the, this first thought section is thoughts I had while watching in chronological order. You could think of it as a running commentary, live tweeting, or the like. And the section after that is thoughts that I had before watching. So it was great to see the logo in 3D again. And yeah, I really love that they hit the ground running. You know, so. If you're watching this video and you don't remember exactly, literally right after the the logo, we see Defender Strange, and I can't believe I'm blanking on her name, America Chavez running away from the the monster that's like, it looks like it's made of mummy wrapping bandages kind of thing. And like Doctor Strange almost kills her so that her power won't fall into the hands of the the monster, or rather Wanda, as we later learn. And then Steven wakes up, and later we find out that dreams are the like our dreams are things that happen to other people in the multiverse other uh, to other us's in the multi that's an incredible idea i it's possible they didn't come up with that for this movie but that really is just an absolutely incredible idea and i do like that defender strange did redeem himself he did save I suppose I should call her America. I'm um, yeah. He did save America's life. And I like seeing our Stephen Strange. I suppose from now on, if I don't specify and I just say Stephen Strange, I'm talking about our Stephen Strange. Earth 616. I quite that was that was Chef's Kiss loved it. Yeah. And it certainly beats the crap out of the, what was the original designation for the MCU? Like, nine, 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 just like a bunch of nines, you know, just, just do a couple of numbers and, and let that be it. But anyway, I like that Steven uses telekinesis to tie the tie. I, 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 I think we should all have some just yeah let's see and the i'm i'm just saying a lot of us are tired of tying ties and we yeah the the other doctor doctor west you know points out did you was that really the only way to go stephen questioning if he could have made some other choice that didn't hurt as many people. And I appreciate this kind of... It, it, almost everything that's come out since Endgame has commented on the snap one way or another. Like, you know, in, in Far From Home, it's comedy with everybody, you know, with people returning. Like, there's the... the the marching band shows up on the basketball court or something like that, you know. Yeah, various have gotten different... And, and here, it is this thing of... That, that yeah. I, I really appreciate that. The, the, the ethical issue of it getting brought up. And Steven literally turns water into wine because Sam Raimi legitimately doesn't just... I, I guess it's possible that 
was someone else's joke, but that really feels like a a Sam Raimi joke. Wow, that was yeah. And Steven apologizes to Christine. And you know, she has a really great line. What was it? I something like because of it because you always needed to have your hand on the knife because of it I admired you because of it I couldn't love you so something like that and I quite enjoyed the fight in the the streets between the the giant squid that is at first invisible and the you know Stephen Wong and the the like apparently that's why that's part of why Stephen still carries the eye of Agamotto because it no longer has the time stone as we know but he uses it to render the thing visible but I know that because it was in an interview not because like I, th I think they could have done a better job showing that visually anyway yeah I I really quite like that we have these big action scenes that are later explained to be you know that was what Wanda was doing that was yeah I liked using the the bus like America runs into the bus because her like survival I, I guess she thought that the bus would drive away from the squid in time yeah it's it's a superhero movie you gotta get people into danger so that the superhero can stop it anyway the the that might also not have been the best way to introduce a character that gets to, that some people find really frustrating. It's it's the first thing we see her do in our world, you know. But yeah, so the let's see, yeah, for, first you know she's inside, and he like makes it like let's see, he kind of splits parts of it, and then he you know like puts it back together on top of part of the squid that looked painful I quite like the running thing of you know Wong telling telling Stephen you know it is it is the custom to bow in the you know in, in respect of the the Sorcerer Supreme yeah I'm aware of the custom Sam Raimi, ladies and gentlemen. And they they plucked out the eye from the giant squid, which means he can no longer look at the hell of you. But yeah, that looked painful. Holy crap. I really like that like America is so used to being on her own, so she, like, grabs the sling ring off Steven, and then they show up right in front of him, and, and Wong is like, you know, more, you know, I have one too. It's just, that was, that was quite funny. And I like the talk at the diner, although, you know, some people apparently didn't like, I, th I think, was it Brad Jones, uh, Cinema Snob, d didn't like the joke about oh does spider-man shoot webs out his butt you know yeah it's i don't think it was necessary but you know i don't know i th i thought they delivered the jokes pretty like if i just read that from the script i'd be like ah really i thought the actors delivered them them pretty well and
I quite like that the, you know, the, the, I, f I forget exactly who, but either Wong or Steven note that this isn't sorcery, this has runes, that means it's witchcraft, and it's, that's nicely done, because that was something WandaVision told us, uh, you know, witchcraft, it, it, not all witchcraft uses runes, but certainly some runes, some runes ruin witchcraft, and, you know, the, yeah, they, they say something indicating, oh, they're thinking of Wanda, and the Wanda Vision theme tune plays briefly, and we see, you know, this sh short scene, and, like, you know, Wanda is tucking in Billy and Tommy, the, you know, one of them at first, the, the cool one doesn't want to at first, but, you know, after, yeah, after she's, like, tucking in the other one, you know, he doesn't say, I want you to tuck me in, he says, you can tuck me in if you want, you know, because that's, yeah, the, the, you know, this is written by someone who understands how kids, like, there's this thing of, like, he wants to, he wants to be more independent, but at the same time, he does still love her and want physical affection from her, you know, that, yeah, they completely, they, they really got how the, yeah, and then she wakes up alone in bed, it's, it's a really great smash cut, I appreciate that they didn't feel the need to, like, draw it out, or to make, like, like, it is an abrupt cut, like, it's, it's whiplash-inducing, and that's exactly the right way to do it, in my opinion. Now, yeah, and, and, you know, Steven and Wanda talk, and he explains the situation, and she tries to offer up, you know, she's like, I mean, couldn't America come to, come here? You know, I, I know what it's like to be afraid of your powers and, and one, you know, and, and suddenly she realizes you didn't tell me her name, you know, and she explains that the, the witchcraft comes easily enough to her. It's the lying that she struggles with, you know, and let's see. And I really loved, you know, at first it looks like it's this really nice, you know, it, it looks like, I mean, it's it's secluded, so if that's not your thing, it's, you know, but it looks nice, you know, and she's like, it, she's like growing apple, apple trees, you know, whatever, she's, she's growing things, you know, this is, it, it is a healthy distraction from, you know, th this is a healthy thing for her to be doing, you know, she shouldn't be, like, sitting and just staring at the picture of her twins, she should be getting into something that give her, gives her some fulfillment, something that she, you know, this is also something she can watch grow, you know, this, this is a healthy outlet, but then we see that it was all an illusion, and it's a really good illusion, too, it's, you know, like with Westview, she must have really transformed things because, like, he can he can recognize. You know, he smells the the apple thingy and says, "Oh, it smells sweet." You know, and yeah, and and we see this really dark, evil-looking for forest, and we see that she's reading the dark hold still. You know, and and ultimately, I'm not sure. I would say it was like a twist. We we kind of knew that she. Like, the thing I had guessed, I, my guess was that she would be good for some of it, evil for some of it. I did not realize she was going to be evil for the entire thing and just introduced as if she was good. But yeah, it's, they, they did a really great job on the intro scene. And... Yeah, we, we find out Wanda is looking for a path into one of the realities where her kids are still alive. And yeah, and, and Wanda talks about how 
Steven broke the rules and became a hero. Good couple of lines, good character moments. And yeah, you know, back at Camartage, they talk about, well, if Wanda wanna to she with with America's power, she could hypnotize the entire multiverse. Which is also great because, like, the idea, you know, WandaVision, part of the, the uh, uh, scope, stakes, part of the stakes. I, I don't know, I guess I'm hungrier for a hunting rifle than meat, or whatever. The, the part of the stakes in that show was, if Wanda wanted to, or if someone tricked her into doing it, she could enslave the entire world, right, enslave, not hypnotize, whatever, enslave the entire world. If they just say that again, it's going to be like, well, okay, we got, that was like a year and a half ago, that was what the stakes were, they really haven't raised at all, but, you know, enslaving the entire multiverse, holy crap, that's, yeah. You know, it's watching movies like this where you get the sense that Sam Raimi feels that a boring scene transition means that's, that's like a lost opportunity. Like, you should have fun scene transitions, memorable scene transitions, whenever possible. And it was a little frustrating that parts of the movie, Wanda is kind of just this 2D villain. You know, she says things that we're used to hearing. MCU villains say, and there's not that much, like, I mean, I guess the idea is supposed to be that she just, she broke bad after the events of WandaVision, and for sure, that's, uh, you know, that, that was something that looked like might be the case in the WandaVision, the final post credit scene. And I think, I, I'm not sure the MCU is the right place for something more complex than that, something where you're going back and forth on, wait, 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 is who, which one is really the good guy here, kind of thing. I thought the Kamartaj shield was really clever, and how, you know, Wanda realized, okay, I can't brute force this, well... I have been told I am spooky, so let's try that out, you know, and she just, she steps out from behind, you know, like, if the guy is standing here, she steps out behind and, like, whispers into his ear, and he does, as we all would, holy crap, that was, that was incredibly creepy. Yeah, I th I like the fight at Camartage. I like that, you know, it wasn't just that, like, one, you know, she, she scares that one guy, creating a very small hole in the shield. She fires, like, a, a red wiggly woo cluster grenade, I guess, in through the hole, which takes out a bunch. But then they have these big, like, Canon kind of things, magic canon. Yeah. I thought it was really cool how, like, so Steven tries to trap her in, like, is it the mirror dimension or is it just a hall of mirrors? I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but yeah, like, and it's it was very evil dead with, like, you know, she sticks her hand in a mirror, and it's like water, and then she starts, like, moving through reflective surfaces, and there's a bit where, like, you know, and they're like, cover the reflect, you know, cover all the mirrors, and, like, America runs up, you know, she, she covers several of them, and she runs up to one more, and, like, the hand just comes out, and it's all, like, gnarl, like, it's, it's making, it's bending in ways that human hands are not supposed to and she steps the entire way out of the mirror and she's at like this really odd like 
yeah, it, it looks legitimately horrifying, and then she snaps back into form. And I, like, I thought it was a very, just, like, she has that line of, you know, I, I forget who, but some someone says, how do you even know they're still alive? And her response is, because I dream about them every night. That is legit, like, you completely understand why she's willing to go so far. And we get the, every day the same dream, every day this... Then wake up and the nightmare begin that that kind of thing from the trailers. I mean, some of her villain speeches in this movie are quite good. I swear, every single fight scene that involves is every single fight scene that involves both Strange and Wong, and some of the ones that only have one of them. At least one of them gets knocked out. I I did think like what what is this an X Men movie or X Men movie? Are we are we? I love several of those movies, especially the first two. It it really felt like I I, I get it you know the they can have they can do such incredible things with magic. It you kind of have to get one of them out of the, I I just it frustrated me. I'm not gonna lie. I really love the trip through the multiverse. I've seen some people say, "Oh, it's no nowhere near as compelling as the the t trip in the first movie." I mean, for sure that one is incredible, and it was original when that one did it, you know. And then Ragnarok did it also. Anyway, it's not original in this movie, but I did really think it was incredible. Like it, it legitimately. Just the, the, what's the word? Yeah, it, it was, it was, it was incredibly cool looking and mind bending. And I, I also, I understand the people who th thought that that was going to be a bigger part of the movie, that it wouldn't just be like all told. It's maybe two minutes of the movie, one or two minutes of the movie, that the two characters spend slipping through a bunch of different, you know, alternate universes. And... Let's see... Yeah, I, I thought it was clever that like let's see what does that say yeah the you know Wanda captures wait no Wanda right America and Steven get stuck in a, a different New York a different universe in the multiverse and they start looking for that one, the the Stephen Strange from that one, for help. And Bruce Campbell shows up, and because it's Sam Raimi, there's some Three Stooges stuff, and I, it it was it was funny. And there wasn't that much abuse of Bruce, or Bruce Buse, if you will, in the Spider-Man trilogy. So maybe this is something, this is what Sam has had pent up for a while. And we're told that America has visited 73 universes. Very cool. I was a little surprised that America Chavez had at least two jokes about capitalism, like against capitalism, but then, I mean, at the end of the day, it's, you know, I've, Disney has been doing the, the kind of, you know, it's clear they don't completely mean it because they're still treating the, their employees badly, or at the, they could treat them better, at the very least. 
but the yeah you know america is like you have to pay for food that's really weird you know they don't do it like that other places right yeah the um, character named america telling a british actor that it's weird for yeah and there was that other thing what was it yeah maybe it's and anyway i i realize it's kind of a ridiculous device but this thing of you know they step on that thing in the street and it replays you know their their most precious memory and you know we see christine giving him the the watch and we see that the first time america used her powers she accidentally you know she the her loved ones went into another universe and she hasn't been able to find them so you know now we know oh 73 it's not just you know uh, whatever i don't feel like doing my homework today i guess i'll visit another dimension that'll be cool no no she's she's been looking for her parents which you know i i really appreciate the you know so yeah the first time she used her powers she hurt someone she loved so, like, New Mutants, so I guess, you know, Marvel likes that idea, at least, even if they didn't necessarily like that movie. Last I checked, it wasn't on Disney+. Plus. I mean, The Last Stand is on Disney+. Plus. Dark Phoenix is on Disney+, Plus, but not The New Mutants. I'm not necessarily saying that New Mutants is better than those, but... I wouldn't say it's that much worse, for sure. I really like the visuals when we see Scarlet Witch using the dream walk. You know, there we have this kind of visualized thing of... Yeah, it, it was very Sam Raimi visual. This time the tea was spiked. It wasn't just tea. A little honey. Like Tilda Swinton. I will say, Tilda Swinton... There wasn't really room for her in this movie, but man was she good in that first movie. And Endgame. Ah. Can't have it. And... I gotta say, the Scarlet Witch possessing Wanda in another universe was really, really creepy and cool. Like, I loved all the Evil Dead style supernatural powers. It, it was all really, really cool. And Scarlet Witch hurts Wong because Sarah destroyed the Darkhold. And the the other Christine eight three eight Christine I guess I'll just call her Christine since we barely see the other Christine in this but yeah yeah Christine talks about oh she works you know in the Baxter building which I mean ah you know so fantastic for and you know, a couple of minutes later we actually see Mr. Fantastic so yeah and apparently Christine went to the funeral of 838, and Stephen says, oh, well, thank you for coming to the funeral. I would have loved for her to be like, oh, I just went to spit on the corpse and make sure he was really dead. Don't tell me that's too dark. This movie is dark. It was really cool seeing the uh, Illuminati and... Right, and, and Mount Wundagore with both Wong and Scarlet Witch. And and it was really clear. And, and they talk they, they mentioned Cathan, you know, this whole thing. That's right out of the comics. You know, Cathan wrote the the spells in the dark hold and wrote it on at least at Mount Wundagore. I'm not one hundred percent certain if it's also carved into the the mountain like we see in this movie, but I could imagine. Certainly, it's a it's a good idea. It's a good way 
you know, we get a change of scenery. It gives Scarlet Witch something different to be doing because we kind of need her to be doing something while the good guys are, you know, if you just cut back to her and she's just still sitting there doing the dream walk thing, that's going to that's going to get old. I think an argument could be made that considering that for most of the movie, like America Chavez, like if you changed if if you if you didn't care if it was a character, if you just wrote, oh, you know, there's a machine that can allow you to traverse the multiverse, and Steven is trying to, like, get the machine away from Wanda, Wanda's trying to get the machine, you know, it, you wouldn't, it wouldn't be a huge difference, it, it, like, thematically, it's important that she, like, he helps her, and she becomes less afraid she becomes able to use the powers more on purpose and I I thought it was really cool those monsters like it looks like and in the trailers it looked like there's gonna be a fight you know it's gonna be Scarlet Witch Wong versus those but then they actually kneel before her, and when you really think about it, yeah, they didn't actually do... Like, it's not like one of them threw something at Scarlet Witch and then stopped or something. No, no, no. Like, sure, they look... It, it, it's kind of like... Yeah, they, they look threatening, but that's just how they look. You know, that's they, they have... They have resting monster face. And... Let's see what was the... Ah, there was another thing that I wanted to... I mean, I guess ultimately they were basically defeated without much of a fight. That was a little underwhelming, at, at least. Like, one of them gets taken out by Wong firing up the, the thing, and then the rest are just shoved off the... or pushed off, something like that. But yeah, we meet the Illuminati, Captain Carter, Blackguard, Captain Marvel, the Maria Rambeau version, and Mr. Fantastic, a.k.a. Jim from The Office. Yeah, that was really, really cool. And Xavier and the X-Men theme plays as he... You know, some of the notes play as he enters... How long did Wong spend on that ledge without... Although I guess, no, it, when it cuts back, we see that he was just lying there. It's not like he was hanging for dear life all that time. That would have been ridiculous. But. And... Yeah, and Wanda explains to Wong, I think it's to Wong, the reason she needs to take America's powers instead of you know, just, like, getting America to transport her to another universe. You know, it's because she is worried that her sons will get some kind of disease, and she'll have to, you know, and, and then she'll be able to go to another part of the multiverse to get the cure. And we find out that the Illuminati actually killed their Stephen Strange and told the public he died a hero love it just I absolutely love it that is exactly the kind of thing the Illuminati does in the comics you know it's this thing of they're the smartest people so they like they make these kinds of decisions they they don't not everything they're they're not just like the guys who give the orders they yeah like that they, they they sometimes trick people manipulate people because they think it will serve the greater good. So, absolutely love it. Like, I think a strong argument could be made that you could basically... Like, if you removed the Illuminati... Like, essentially... Yeah, it, it, sound, it sounds sacrilegious to say. Because I love seeing them. I, I, want, I hope we see more of the Illuminati. Even though they're all dead now. You know, other, other multiverses... You know, I mean, now maybe Steven will now actually found an Illuminati in, you know, yeah, Earth 616. 
but the the ah right on the tip of my tongue I swear the other thing that the right right hypothetically if you removed the Illuminati themselves because you could just have Christine tell Stephen you know this is what happened to the Stephen from this universe you know you didn't need and and they don't they don't actually stop they barely even slow down Wanda so it wasn't really necessary but I did really enjoy seeing it and I like that Xavier did trust Steven and give him a little bit more of a chance I really love seeing the Illuminati versus Wanda and I love that Xavier now has visible telepathy I, I think was there maybe one of the Fox X-Men movies where you get like little vibration like they, they do a special effect where it looks like there's vibration emanating from his his head when he uses the powers but in the comics they just they draw these like I think they're circle circles spreading out from the the forehead you know because how else are you gonna know you know you can't like in a, in a movie you can add a sound effect and you can like zoom in on the on the forehead and we, and, and you know he'll do the this thing and we'll be like oh okay telekinesis and it's also like if if all you see in the in the comic is him doing this and there isn't anything other visual that's not visual enough it, we we need yeah but yeah here they actually do have these little white circles that like they're not like bright white they're not super obvious but they are there you know so yeah i i really love how much this embraces the the comic book thing and yeah, like, Wanda closes Black Bolt's mouth, and he t kills himself with his own powers, and then shreds Mr. Fantastic, because that, that would work. I, I, I'm not sure they've died in, like, the, like that in the comic, but the, I, I'm almost certain that would work, yeah. It doesn't matter how much he can stretch if you if you shred him like that, you know. Like, don't just like punch him really hard. He's just gonna absorb it because like it's like rubber, you know, or or plastic. It's it's way too malleable for for something like that to work. And I think didn't someone try to shoot him and he can he can change his density so much that it doesn't hurt him. I feel like I read that. But yeah, if you just if you shred him like that, which she can with her powers, yeah. And I appreciate that although Captain Carter has very little screen time in this, she does get to say, I can do this all day. And yeah, even Captains Carter and Marvel die, and die very quickly. Like, I, I think I saw someone here on YouTube say, ah, oh, you know, maybe Captain Car Carter survived. I, uh, not Carter. Maybe Captain Marvel did survive having that thing crushed. I, I really, I would be extremely surprised, no. And I really loved seeing Xavier versus Wanda in a psychic battle. And Wanda actually killing Xavier. And I, I again, I think that would work. You know, he basically goes to, I forget what it's called. Not the astral plane, right? I, f I forget, but yeah. And, you know, she shows up and snaps his neck and yeah and strange tries to use water against wanda figuring maybe she's a fire type and i like that there's this door that only steven could open door to Shanti and and it's Christine who realizes it must be the watch. Right at this point, I noted you know if you really want something that goes to all different kinds of places in the multiverse, you know binging what if is gonna, you know that that spends more time in different parts of the multiverse than than this one, but it's also a series. And yeah, Wanda manages to trap. Stephen and Christine in a universe without America 
so that they struggle to get out of there. Very clever. And it looks like they're in Strange Supremes universe, you know, with the with the melting buildings and everything. And, you know, I, I like the fact that this movie tells us he wasn't the only Dr. Stephen Strange to ruin an entire universe. He also wasn't the only one to pay for that. And... What on earth did I write? I have no idea what that means, so I'm just going to move on. And yeah, we find out that Steven lost a sister named Donna as a kid. And it sounds like that's part of how, like, you know, he and his sister were playing on frozen, a frozen pond, and she went through. And it's this thing, you know, when he grew up and grew older, it was like, he feels like he has to be in control. He feels like he can't lose because if he if he doesn't lose now, then he can kind of tell himself, oh, I never failed. I never lost. I never lost anyone. And Steven, you know, brings up that, you know, Christine asked, are you happy at the wedding? Which also made me think, oh, I guess this isn't Strange Supreme, but then I thought, because, because, he, you know, she wasn't married in, in that What If episode. But then, on the other hand, the, the, ah, uh, what was it? It's, uh, it's right on the tip of my tongue. There's a lot of things on the tip of my tongue. They're having a party. I thought that maybe she was she got married years before that episode took place then later got divorced and that's yeah and yeah when when supreme strange told our strange have you ever had a dream where you're falling off a tall building that was probably me holy crap that was horrifying I don't, I still don't know how I feel about the musical note fight scene. I understand why some people hate it. I completely, it is, it is, what, what, what even is it? Like, I don't even know, like, I don't think I could completely explain it to someone who hadn't watched the movie. I don't know, but I will say I haven't seen it before. It didn't, rem like, I mean, I guess you'd have to go to like, yeah, like there's a there's a psychonauts level where there's something similar to that, but I've never seen something that wasn't a video game do anything like that, and I don't think I've. The, I think these are the only two places I've seen it, and and actually doing it in a live action movie that is also in part about like the pain of loss and grieving and acceptance of you know the way things are for you and to for for this movie to also have that like yeah I, I don't know it feels like Sam Raimi might be trolling us good troll very very effective and you know we see a strange flying out of the you know, uh, yeah, the, the place, and he gets impaled, but then we see the, the third eye open, so, ah, it was Supreme Strange, not the, not our Strange, not 616, and, yeah, I noted that, you know, like Avengers 2, if you, pay very close attention, you can follow, you know, Avengers 2 you can watch without having watched anything else. But the, this one, 
you do need to know some key things from Avengers 3 and 4. Basically, everything that happens with Wanda and Steven in those two movies. And... Yeah, I mean, Christine, like I mentioned, doesn't still doesn't get a lot to do. At least she did get to... Like, in the first one, she saves him when he shows up wounded. Um... And sort of acts as the anchor to, to make sure things don't get way too crazy. I mean, in this, she defends him using one of those holy... One of those uh, relics. And strange dream walks into the zombie... You know, yeah, making a zombie out of the corpse of Defender Strange. And I really appreciate that they actually buried him properly under, like, bricks so that, you know, you have the shot of the hand coming up and digging out. And, like, he's he hasn't been dead for that many hours, so it's not, like, complete, dis just destroyed. But he has begun to rot, you know, so, and, and like, part of the face is, like, the part of the jaw and, like, and the, when he talks, like... Thank you so much, Sam. I, I, on behalf of everyone who wanted more of that kind of thing after watching Dark Man 1, which is in fact a movie, for those who might not have seen it, this is not a spoiler, where someone who's missing part of their face can still talk. Like, they, they open and close their mouth and words come out. And it's just horrifying looking because it looks wrong. Like you can maybe kind of accept, okay, they lost some of their face. They can still try to have a normal life. Nope, they talk, they talk. Holy crap, that's creepy. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely loved it. The, the, yeah. And I like that Wanda pointed out that he's a hypocrite. You know, that's, that's kind of a thing. The, like villains pointing out that the heroes are hypocrites. It happened in Loki as well. Moon Knight, yeah. I really love, like, in the first one, I rewatched the first one a week ago, I guess? So, recently, for sure. In the first one, you know, Strange grabs that, that thing that looks like it, it's, it holds, I don't know, gold or fire or something. And Mass Mickelson is like, you have no idea how to use that, do you? And in this Christine shows, she does have some ideas. She has she has numerous ideas, and they're all completely correct. And she uses it like it's like a freaking cannon of magic or something. That's really cool. I did feel like it was a little weird that like the spirits of the damned are much more effective against Scarlet Witch than the shields and magic of Kamartage, I don't know, I guess because she was the one who chose when that battle would happen and she wasn't really expecting the spirits of the dead. And, and they do also only, it is only like a few minutes, ultimately. At first it looked like that was how she was going to be defeated. But it was just to buy time so America could get free. America Chavez. America the country will never be free. Not as long as Republicans win elections. Oh, uh, that makes me sound like a conspiracy theorist. I think that anyone running for election should be... They, you should make sure that they believe in democracy. I'm not saying that you can't run if you have certain political beliefs. As long as you swear to uphold democracy and there are consequences if you break that vow, run, run a marathon for office. Anyway, yeah, and, and America Chavez is actually ready to die. You know, she's all like, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. And, yeah, you know, some people have said, oh, all it took was one pep talk, and suddenly she knows how to use her powers. I mean, essentially, he didn't so much... He, ba he basically just pointed out that she has been using her powers 
it's just up to this point it's been intuition instead of like focus you know it's it's not that she's doing it on purpose it's that something in the back of her head knows how to do it and you know america chavez realized wanda's sons tommy and billy are actually scared of you know they they call scarlet witch the witch and call for their mom now at first like for a second i was like they're not dissing the andrew taylor joy vehicle are they but no 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 because that movie is of course pronounced the the witch but yeah it was, it was a really clever idea for for this yeah and and you know Scarwitch says, I'm I'm not a monster. And finally she realizes and you know she she and and the other Wanda tells her, you know, your kids are loved. And so it's it's a well known fact that Sam Raimi likes to abuse his actors, throwing things at them and hitting them in the head with things for like you know if, if you watch spider-man 2 it's sam raimi hitting peter in the face with a school bag when you know during the rain dark raindrops keep falling on my head scene and yeah i'm i would pretty much guess that he's the person throwing the the little toys that you know you see Billy and Tommy picking up things and throwing them and then there's a shot of I, th I think there's maybe at least one shot where both like the kids are throwing and you see Elizabeth Olsen being hit but there's also one shot where she's just staying there for like several seconds and stuff hitting her in the head Sam Raimi was one of the people throwing the toys I'm almost 100% certain and and, you know, Sam Raimi movie, someone has to get sprayed in the face with something. Bruce Campbell, although in, in this case, it was him spraying himself in the face. But, yeah, you know, the end result is that someone got sprayed something in their face. Sam Raimi. And... I did quite like that, you know, Scarlet Witch was like, I will never... What does that say? No one will ever... That, that's not an I, it's a one. No one will ever be tempted by the Darkhold again. I will not die a monster. And seemingly she destroys the Darkhold in all universes, which is very, very cool. And Strange tells... Christine that he still loves her and finally bows before Wong fixes the broken clock so it won't only be right twice a day and all of the you know it, it shows character growth and yeah it, it worked it, it hit I felt and I mean the ending I feel like it can be interpreted as that's the the supreme strange dream walking as our strange but maybe it means that there's a struggle between them and ultimately our strange does win but now he's able to open his third eye or, i don't know and we get the mid credit scene of charlie's tyron demanding of strange that he help fix the incursion that he caused it's hard for me to use to to com to fully express through words. I they should have sent a poet. How glad I am that Charlize Tyron is now in the MCU. I cannot wait for her to have a bigger role. She's been in movies that I've liked for thirty years now, and. I I'm so glad there's going to be there's going to be more of just yeah. I know that she's in some of the Fast and Furious movies. I 
it's not impossible that at some point I will watch them. But yeah, she it's that's so cool. And she apparently plays a character named Clea, who is like lives in the dark dimension where Dormammu resides that we learned about in the first movie. Yeah, I'm I'm really really looking forward to that's that's going to be re really really cool. And the actual post credit scene is Bruce Campbell finally stop you know he's finally able to stop hitting himself why is he hitting himself well, whatever you know it must have been the whole three weeks and he looks directly into the camera and gleefully exclaims it's over which i kind of i think more movies should do that more movies should just have this you know what 30 second character show up at the end and be happy that the movie is over <laughs> just yeah i i I've, I've said it before i appreciate a good trolling and like everyone was saying like what's gonna be the amazing oh that's bruce campbell saying it's over you got me you got me sam that's a that's a that's good trolling i guess he didn't sleep too long this time so I, we didn't get Billy and Tommy in the 616 universe this time. And they are, like, in the comics, they end up becoming young Avengers. So there is some chance that they will come through, but they'd also have to be aged up. Yeah. And I, there is some chance that this is the last time we see Wanda Maximoff, Scarlet Witch, in the MCU, and I definitely, if that is the case, I, I, I don't love that it's not something that's more sympathetic to her, uh, you know, I, th I think WandaVision struck a good balance between saying that what she's doing is evil and having sympathy and empathy for her, but the MCU, like, the villains, <laughs> there are some complex villains in the MCU. There are some villains where you can understand where they're coming from, but I'm not sure we've seen a movie where we legitimately weren't sure if the villain was the villain, you know? If, like, is that, are they actually evil? They might not be the main villain of that story, but they are clearly evil. And, yeah, this is another, you know, she has turned evil. You know, and they explain it's the dark hole. That's why she's evil. And that's, you know, like, I'm not 100% certain how much time has passed between the post credit scene where she's seen reading the dark hole and then this movie. But yeah, she's spent that time studying the dark hole and it has corrupted her. So I, I understand that. And I do, I think it would feel weird if the Wanda Maximoff story ended with a happy ending because her her entire MCU existence and a lot of her comic existence has been defined by tragedy you know like literally every time if if Wanda is in an MCU movie like you you know okay someone she loves is going to die or betray her Possibly die twice. Possibly she's going to be the one to kill them. You know, it, it's like... Like, Civil War... No one she loves dies in that, but she is betrayed, you know, by Tony, by Vision. And... Let's see. Endgame... Essentially confirms that Vision is still gone. You know, the yeah, the that one's where we start to see the, the grieving. And then WandaVision, she loses Vision again and Billy and Tommy. And then in this, she loses Billy and Tommy again. You know, it's... And obviously, you know, Age of Ultron, she loses Quicksilver, which I still don't understand why people say, ah, who cares? You, 
he seemed like a like he had done wrong things for sure but he turned around he he was on he became a hero by the end and he sacrifices himself to save someone's someone else's life you know and in infinity war vision dies twice and one of them is her killing him so it would have felt weird if like let's hypothetically say that this movie ended with her taking over the body permanently of the other Wanda of uh, I guess we don't actually know which cuz it wasn't 838 right I don't think it was 838 no hold on no yeah wait it must be 838 that's why she was able to yeah yeah 838 Wanda I like yeah let's hypothetically say that the movie ended with you know, like Strange saying, you don't have to do this, I have another way. And then she gets to take over the body of 838 Wanda and live out the rest of her life like that. And like, in exchange for her not using magic to, like, that that that's that she only uses magic when she's with them. And she says, well, I'll spend my entire life with them or something, you know. And uh, let's be honest, there are some movies that would have played that off as a happy ending. That would have said, oh, no, no, don't worry about the fact that she just, you know, removed, like, like she is using, she's, the, the original person's, like, entire, like, their, their brain and personality, she just overwrote there. You know, d don't worry about that. It's still a happy ending. It would have felt weird. It would not have fit with the Wanda we got, but I don't think it had to and and I do think that it makes sense do the the villain thing I just I think it would have been good if there had been a little bit more like the the depiction of her had been had had some more sympathy and empathy anyway that brings us to the final section notes taken before watching and yeah so I I hope that we won't have to wait six years before we get Doctor Strange 3 I hope to see like I I really like that uh, America Chavez ends up a student at Camartage I think that makes a lot of sense and yeah, like the there's more that they can build on there. And that yeah, so So yeah, I saw one critic say not as visual right Infinite realities tend to reduce the tra dramatic impact of any one single reality and reduces what there is at stake in a given situation. I I agree that there's potential for that to happen, but I really don't think that happens here. Like, they make it clear very early in the movie, if Wanda gets America Chavez and gets her powers, there is some chance that she's going to enslave the entire multiverse I mean at that point it's like no I I completely disagree with with that critic on that and yeah so I wrote down what if Captain Carter shows up and yeah I wrote you know since it's Sam Raimi directing Bruce Campbell shows up I what I don't think I saw Ted Raimi in there. I was a little bit surprised by that. And yeah, I already talked about getting something sprayed on their face and or in their mouth. Zombies, Lovecraftian horror, but that, you know, the trailers told us that. And it's not quite a down it's not a Sam Raimi downer ending. It's a little bit of a downer ending for Wanda, obviously. And, you know, technically, now that Sam Raimi is directing, Zombie Strange is Deadite Strange. Hey, 
I don't make the rules. I don't even think them up or write them down. I deserve neither credit nor blame. And yeah, so some other same ring trademarks according to IMDb. Voice over from principal character at the end of his films. I don't think this one is. And other than Bruce Campbell, Ted Raimi, he also frequently casts James Franco and J.K. Simmons. I mean, we just got J.K. Simmons in two Spider-Man movies, two MCU Spider-Man movies. Although in the first one, he was only a, you know, tiny cameo. James Franco, yeah, a little glad that he didn't show up in this. Right, I, some people didn't like that there were, like, ultimately there's not that many cameos in this movie. I thought they did the exact right, like, there were as many and they had as much screen time as the movie could really handle because this is essentially at the end of the day this story is about Steven, Wanda and America Chavez you know pretty much everyone else is there to support their story kinetic wild camera movement which we do have and point of view shot from the villain monster I th think we got at least one of those yes and frequently filmed scenes in which a main character is on the receiving end of an extremely brutal attack yeah some of that in here Let's see. His ability to mix violence with humor, also seen. And yeah, now I've seen some people say that Wanda Vision, the show, didn't seem to realize not not the show within a show. The, the show we can watch oh, about the show didn't seem to realize that Wanda was the villain. I'm not sure I agree that the show doesn't, but I certainly do agree that she is the real villain of the show. What she does is monstrous. The show does make us understand why she did it, but it's still monstrous. What she does is far worse than what Agatha has done in present day, as far as we know. I will acknowledge it's possible that the show doesn't seem to realize that, and that's the reason that I think that it... The reason that I think it does is because a lot of my favorite stories are about people who do something wrong because of their pain and where the storyteller wants to understand why they did it not only judge them for it not excusing them but not only judging them that's you know why monster is one of my favorite movies that's why I love the games developed by frictional games and yeah I mean this movie yeah, I mean, in this movie, she is for sure the the villain. And let's see. Yeah, I noted, I hope it doesn't turn her into a two-dimensional villain, the way Endgame did to Thanos. I hope she's complex, like Thanos in Infinity War, and as she has been up to this point. I mean, I would say overall, we spend more time scared of her than empathizing with her. There are scenes where she empathizes, like... There's that bit where she she's just taken over 838 Wanda and she's, you know, she says she says I'm taking out the trash which, you know, yeah. She's going to she thinks of strange as trash is is the yeah. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. I'm just saying we 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 get that, you know. And yeah, you know, she she just wants to get out of there so she can get Chavez's power so she can be with them forever because if she spends a lot of time with them now she's gonna lose the chance to get America Chavez's powers and she won't be able to be with them so yeah you know and they're like they, they wrote this I, I don't know if they wrote it maybe they just perform it but there's this song about like ice cream how they how they love ice cream some something like that i think it actually got 
I think it was listed as the ice cream song in the in the end credits, but I, I have to admit I did not quite pick up if the if it actually was the yeah, what's the word? If it had been written before or if it was like being Ah, there's a wiki let's see. Um Okay, so those are the ones made by let's see. Nice. No, it's not in there. Anyway. Um yeah, you know, she she can hardly bear to go so close to them because she she has to go and get the the yeah. She has to go to the, the Sanctorum so she can get Chavez's powers, and yeah. So, the, yeah, there's definitely some of that, but more, much more time is spent us scared of her. You know, she is the thing that is scary in a lot of the movie, and she sends scary things. Now, I had a lot of positive things to say about the WandaVision finale the first time I watched it. I watched it again recently you know yeah for to since since I was watching this movie and I think maybe it should have turned out that like Agatha was just the devil on her shoulder she wasn't really there she was you know it it was a part of Wanda a, a creation of Wanda to allow herself to do something this evil she should still be saying some of the things in the finale that she does. She's your meat puppet. I just cut the strings. Heroes don't torture people, Wanda. You're going to have to choose between your family and the citizens of Westview. But, yeah. And, and like, if you want a big witch battle, have it be that, like, basically, the, the, maybe, maybe, Actually, yes, I th Agatha is there, but she's not evil. She's, you know, as fun as Agatha all along is, you know, ch change that and don't have her be all sinister in the last couple of... Just have it be that, you know, like, Wanda realizes Agatha is actually also a witch, and she's like, why did you lie to me? And Agatha manages to use magic to split... Wanda away from Scarlet Witch so that you have evil Scarlet Witch who is fighting to continue the the Westview thing and you have a more like good person version in in Wanda I think that would have been you know yeah so you can have the two of them fight and then you can have like an ending where it seems like Wanda has the these dark urges under control and then the post credit scene reveal that now she now that she has the dark hole she's even worse that that kind of thing and yeah so in other MCU movies and WandaVision Wanda is sometimes very sympathetic but other times dark malicious legitimate creepy and scary and yeah in this she is also all of those things now, this does not feature Vision or Agatha Harkness. I don't think there was room for them. I'm glad that they didn't try to fit that in also. And I was wondering if this movie would reveal that there was some supernatural force behind WandaVision other than Wanda herself. And, you know, if it would be Mephisto, since there were so many Easter eggs for Mephisto in that show. It really does seem like it was entirely her own. She wasn't even being corrupted by something the way that she was in, in this or, uh, she was being corrupted by her grief. She wasn't being corrupted by an external force, is what I mean. And, yeah, Xavier is the only mutant that is introduced. And honestly, like, if you have no idea what X-Men or mutants are, you can watch this movie and be none the wiser. You'll just be like, you, you'll understand, oh, okay, he's you, he has mind powers. He, You know, if, if you've watched the MCU, you know what telepathy is by now, so, but yeah. And, yeah, I, I don't personally think that characters get lost in the shuffle. I mean, the, the, 
the cam the, the Illuminati cameos are just there for this kind of you know it's it's cool and then they're got like if Wanda hadn't killed them they would have had to find some other way to write them out of the rest of the movie you know there isn't really room in the rest of the movie for them I liked seeing Captain Car Carter with a jetpack and this I think this might be the first MCU movie where one of the heroes truly breaks bad. After all, Bucky was under mind control. Civil War didn't lead to heroes doing evil things. But yeah, here Wanda is outright the villain. And yeah, like, she, you know, parts of WandaVision realized that she was the villain, but no other MCU movie has treated her as just outright a villain. Like, in... in Avengers 2, she's essentially a tool for, you know, the evil men to, evil men, evil robots to, yeah. But she's not actually someone who likes to, like, she doesn't want regular people to be in pain. She wants the Avengers gone so that, because she thinks that's the way to avo avoid more pain, yeah. Yeah, so that uh, those are that's everything that I had to say about this movie. So I, you know, let let me know in the comments. Did you think this movie lived up to its potential? Do you, what do you think should have been done differently? What are your hopes for Doctor Strange three? I yeah, and if you like the video, please. Thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell. There should be a link to my main channel page. One, two, or more links to stuff like irrelevant playlists. I suggested you for you to watch on screen right about now. I put out one vlog per week, reviewing and sharing spoiler thoughts on a movie, and one talking about my spoiler filled thoughts on the most recent episode of the current Disney Plus MCU shows, which these days is Moon Knight, which just ended. And when talking about my spoiler-filled thoughts on the episode of The Mandalorian that I've personally finally gotten around to watching, I'm actually completely caught up now, have watched all of season two. And recently, the review and thoughts videos tend to come out very similar to this one. In other words, if you want more videos like this, you're in luck. You can check out my back catalog, as well as catch my video next week. I hope you enjoyed watching, as I enjoyed watching and recording. And I'll catch you next time. See you in the multiverse.